All right, so we're going to come back to this integral one more time. And rather than doing four rectangles or 16 rectangles or 1,000 rectangles, we're going to do this in general, n rectangles. See what happens, OK? So the way the solution is going to look here, our delta x is going to be, well, 4 minus 0 now over n rectangles. Our xi is going to be, again, left endpoint, which is 0, i minus 1 times delta x, right? xi plus 1 is going to be 0 plus i times delta x. Okay? So if we're using right endpoints, that means we want to use xi plus 1, uh, which is good because it's a lot simpler to just have the i in there. Okay? So we work out now our f of xi plus 1. That's our f at the right endpoint times delta x is going to be, it's going to be so 4 times i times delta x minus i times delta x squared. And then we multiply by delta x. So this looks like 4 delta x squared times i, OK, minus delta x cubed times i squared. Now, if you want to put in your delta x as 4 over n, right, then what you get here is this is going to be 64 over n squared times i. And this is going to be 64 over n cubed times i squared. OK? All right. So not so bad, really. And, and now we want to go ahead and we want to actually do the sum. Right? So we come over here and we say, OK, so our integral 0 to 4 of fx, uh, well, I'll write it as fx dx, OK, is equal to the sum i going from 1 to n f of xi plus 1. We're using the, the right endpoint sum times delta x. So it's the sum i going from 1 to n of 64 over n squared times i minus 64 over n cubed times i squared. Okay? So now, bring that 64 over n squared out front. We have that. 64 over n cubed out front. OK. And now, at this point, we flip back to the, uh, to the summation properties. We look these up. Maybe by now you've memorized them. If not, that's OK. You just look them up. 64 over n squared. This is n times n plus 1 over 2. 64 over n cubed times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. All right? And notice that the i's are all gone, right? Everything here is completely in terms of n. It depends only on n. Now we see if we can simplify. Uh, I think we can simplify a little bit, right? We can, uh, we can cancel an n. Uh, we can cancel one of them here. Um, what do we have that's common? There's a 64. Well, you know, we could also do 32. 32, that leaves me with a 3 there. Okay. So common factors. 32 times n plus 1. Okay. Over, well, let's pull out an n as well. All right, there's an n left over here. T 
times. Well, actually, that's everything here, right? 32, because this is gone, that's gone, n plus 1, n. Everything. 1. What's left over here? So the 32 I took out, n plus 1 I took out. There's still an n left, because there's two of them, right? n squared. So I have 2n plus 1 over 3n left over. OK. Not so bad. Um, and you could try to simplify a little bit if you want, right? Uh, let's try to clean this up. Uh, we could do this as 32 times 1 plus 1 over n. And in here, if we try to clean this up, we have, so 2n over 3n is just 2 over 3. Um, so 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. And then there's still a 1 over 3n that's left, right? OK. And actually, if I factor out the 1 third, 32 over 3, I have 1 plus 1 over n, 1 minus 1 over n. That's the difference of squares. 32 over 3, 1 minus 1 over n squared. Wow. That's a pretty satisfying result, right? That's a pretty simple result in the end. Yes, there was a fair amount of work to get there, right? We had to do some algebra. We had to kind of be careful. Um, 32 over 3 times 1 minus 1 over n squared. Now, there's a couple things that are nice about that result. One is that it's simple. The other is that it tells us something. What does it tell us? Well, it tells us something about how this approximation depends on the number of rectangles, right? The dependence on n is contained entirely here, right? And notice what it looks like. It's 1 over the square of n, right? So that's a number that gets pretty small with n, and it gets small fast, right? So this is really telling us, hey, look, your area is 32 over 3 minus something that goes as 1 over n squared, right? So take n big enough, you're going to get a pretty accurate answer, right? That n equal to 1,000 that we did before, right? you're accurate to within one over roughly a thousand squared. So, so you're accurate to within one in a million. That's pretty good, right? Um, it tells us something more. If we let n get bigger and bigger and bigger, and in fact, we could think about doing something like a limit here, right? If we let n go to infinity, what happens? This just goes away, right? We did that way back in the very first chapter. We know what happens as n goes to infinity. This goes to zero. That tells us that, you know, if we want to get the exact area here, all we need to do is, is consider a limit. Let the number of rectangles go to infinity, right? We try not to think too hard about what that means. We're adding up the area of infinitely many rectangles, each of which is infinitely thin. Um, but somehow it comes out to a value. Right? 32 over 3. That's pretty cool. Right? You could also, if you want, <coughs> you could try doing this over again using left endpoints and see what that looks like. Left endpoints is a little bit trickier because of the, the i minus 1, right? Uh, it's, you have an i minus 1 here. Over here, you got to square it. Um, the algebra is a lot worse on the left endpoint, which is why we did the right endpoint. But if, if, if you're feeling uh, adventurous and patient, Play around and, and see what the answer looks like when you're doing left endpoints. See how that compares to the right endpoint. Uh, but overall, a nice result. Uh, let's try it again with a different function. <laughs>